Hello everyone, Marcus Dahl here with another devlog for the Virtual Reality RPG. Let's get this started. At this point, I can say that the direct modeling work for the character model still needs a little bit of work, although in terms of actually creating bits, I've more or less finished. The things I need to figure out in terms of uh, the model at this current stage are weight mapping, as well as how I'm actually going to assemble the model in the final project. As it is right now, the model has all its different elements fully created and at high resolutions from a polygon standpoint. However, this isn't all that good being that this is a virtual reality project, and having a ton of polygons, while helpful from a detail perspective, isn't going to really be helping things from a performance standpoint, which is what I'm valuing even more than graphical fidelity in any respects in this case, especially since I can't hope to create anything that'll even compare to any modern AAA game, or even some indie projects, considering I've only got a 6 month time span to work with at this stage. In the next few days, I'll probably just take the time to decimate the model down and use the boolean operator to combine all the different parts into one singular mesh in order to make things a lot simpler from a modeling or weight mapping standpoint, because as it stands, I'm having some issues with regards to the character's pants and their legs uh, having some weighting issues, wherein the legs kind of go through the pants in certain stages, and I just don't want to have to deal with that, so I'm just going to take the boolean operator and get rid of a lot of those excess elements. At the very least, I can say at the end of that, that there will be considerably less draw calls to have to deal with in the VR game, since it's only going to have to call one element, or one material, for all the different elements of the character, from the normal map to the specular map and other things, although I am going to have to take the time to create those other maps. All in all, it just goes to show that you really don't know what you're capable of until you actually sit down and do it, and that you never know what kind of things you might have to learn or try out throughout the way just to get something that you like. Well, at the very least, I'm still confident that I should be able to finish up the project or this stage of the project within the expected time frame, which should be sometime around Christmas for the character movement standpoint. Hopefully by New Year's I'll be able to have at least one enemy done so that I can test things out and maybe show a quick gameplay video to kick off the New Year, right? You know, fight a wolf or a glob or something. I'm not, I'm just rambling. Moving onwards, let's go over the locomotion system and what I've been having thoughts on in regards to its current implementation. The locomotion system I have in mind is actually done from a core design standpoint. The problem comes in the form of the users and VR tech in this case. The mechanism I have in mind for the user's movement at this point will have the user using steps to engage in motion. This involves using linear interpolation for each cycle of motion to imitate the similar cycle that can occur in the human gait. While this would aesthetically be very good, it runs counter to the recommendations of the Oculus best practice findings. Acceleration, or the rate of change in one's velocity, is one of the things that can quickly cause motion sickness in virtual reality. Of particular note is a gradual or steady acceleration. Slowly speeding up or turning as such generates an expectation for vestibular data that our brain simply won't be getting. That's a problem in this case since my combat is intended to be rather fast and dynamic. You'll quickly have to go from walking to sprinting to jumping to tilting and so on, and that's before we even get into sword arts, flight, and limit burst. That should easily add up to a megaton of accelerations for a single bout. I actually intend to make use of this negative with enemies, making it so their attacks will aim to hurt you actively within the game from an HP standpoint, but also externally by trying to nauseate you. Don't worry, I'll put a disclaimer in the marketing materials and before a play session so most people should hopefully be informed of what they're getting themselves into. I don't want to start doing the work I currently have in mind logic wise, which would heavily emulate the human gait, since it would likely generate an artificial head bob, a lot of instability, and a nightmare of motion sickness for people whose stomachs aren't made of steel. I may end up having to make movement a little bit more smoothly flowing, since that would result in a lot less motion sickness, but consequently, turns have the inverse problem where smoothly turning yaw turns are the bane of others' guts. To quote John Carmack, Stick yaw is such a VR poison that removing it might be the right move. Swivel chair dash stand or don't play. That's a bit of a problem for me since the entire purpose of the control system is to use one half of the controller to move and the other to attack. There is no way in reality to play this game using motion controls. The movement at higher levels are superhuman. No one could jump high enough to match the inputs unless we're dealing with fractions of the Earth's gravity. As a compromise, I think I'll emulate the steps with the turns by making it easier to turn into increments using the horizontal tilt axis as a gauge, but even this is going to be a rather interesting thing to implement. Well everyone, that mostly does it for what I want to cover in this video. 
there's still a lot of work that needs to be done and I want to just focus on that but I wanted to give you guys a quick update so you guys aren't completely out of the loop since I haven't been posting much in these last few days. I apologize for not saying anything on Thanksgiving this past weekend so consider it a bit late but happy Thanksgiving and I can definitely say I'm thankful for everyone who's taking their time to watch these videos and who's following things as they develop whether it's for your own personal interest or just to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching everyone. This has been Marcus Stahl, logging out.